pre-orders are magical at Dorkside Toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man Molten Man Wave, which is, oddly enough, timed perfectly for the release of Spider-Man Far From Home in theaters. You have your Far From Home Spider-Man, you have your Far From Home Stealth Spider-Man, you have Mysterio from the movie, but we also get comic figures with the wave with Scorpion, with Spider-Woman, there's Doppelganger, and then, ooh, Hydro-Man, look at him. So as usual, since I got this whole wave together, I might as well review the whole wave together, right? I've had a couple of suggestions of spreading them out, maybe one, maybe two per review, but man, I get a case in, I get excited, I want them all, I wanna get them all out, I wanna play with all of them, I, I can't wait that long. Mm. The side of the packaging, you get nice artwork for all the characters in the wave. And no, that's not Flash, it's just Whitewater. On the back, you get bigger pictures. From the side, you get bios for each of the characters. I miss the halfy headshots down here. It, 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 I don't know why I like that so much, but then you also get a picture of the Build-A-Figure together. You get the warnings. On the bottom, more legalese, UPC. But I'm gonna quit shuffling these all around. <laughs> and just get into them. Let's let's look at the figures. First up, let's take a look at Doppelganger. Yes, it reuses the body from Six-Armed Spider-Man from an earlier wave. So it inherits the details that came with that figure that was reused from a previous movie Spider-Man. You have the pattern to the blues. You have the sculpted in webbing on the red. Even the spider logo on the front and on the back are sculpted on. But it also carries over the same problems. No ab crunch, no waist swivel, no kind of articulation in the torso at all. And while it kind of sucks to not have that articulation it would be awesome to have this many arms and the legs and the articulation of the torso to get him even creepier poses i can't help but feel there's some kind of safety standards at work here they have to make the pegs big enough on the arms that they don't just pop off and that apparently doesn't leave enough room in the torso to put articulation all six arms are reuse of the same arm i've got a little warpage right there on that one but they did come along and give us new hand sculpts with two fingers and a thumb on each and that includes the feet with the two toes and then the the back toe, I guess you could call it. You can just throw him down, he stands up, no problem. And then up at the head, you get the teeth, you get the eyes with that grid pattern in it. It just, it's creepy. Articulation wise though, there's a hinge at the top with a ball going up into the head. Can, well, because of the size of the head, that's about as far down as he can look. Nice up, a little bit of tilt, swivel. All six arms are a hinge and swivel at the shoulder, comes in, rotates around, swivel at the bicep. Double elbow gets you good range on all of them. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Hinge and swivel at the hands. <laughs> nothing there ball coming out to the hip goes forward back nice out though swivel double knee all the way to the ass swivel at the boot hinge at the ankle goes back goes forward and then nice forward facing pin for rocker i go to move the shoulders a little tight heavy detent there but the biceps seem a little gappy almost like it goes from one sculpt to another just be careful don't pull on the actual arm itself kind of move it up closer where you're not stressing that peg accessories I'm extra arms i guess but because it uses but because it uses the base body of an older I, I can't even remember which movie this was an older movie spider-man it's a little bit smaller than the standard comic book figures these days here he is with six arm spidey and then uh, it's not pizza spidey is this the raft from san diego and then here it is with the marvel legends standard base bucky body black panther that's a lot of bees. And then the game reverse Spider-Man. Next up, let's do a Far From Home Spider-Man himself. And it's not that I'm not excited about this Spider-Man. It's just that really when you come down to it, you look at the rest of the wave, there's a lot of good figures here. Also, this Spider-Man doesn't come with a Build-A-Figure piece, so it's not essential that you buy it if you want to complete Molten Man. But this Spider-Man's already looking pretty cool. Now, I want to say this is 100% brand new sculpt. From what I can see, it matches the movie fairly well. There may be some changes because they usually do that in post-production. The webbing sculpt is indented into the body, so that makes for a nice effect, but I, I, I kind of wish there was a black wash or something to bring it out even more. The shadows catch it okay when they're not in these, you know, six or seven bright lights I've got on here. But, I don't know, it comes off a little bit plain. And then on the black parts of the costume, it's actually, is it painted on? It almost looks like it was sprayed with some kind of dull coat to put this grid pattern on here. It gives it kind of a fiber look, but without being over accentuated. Sometimes when toy companies at six inch scale try to do sculpt like this on there, it comes out too heavy because you shrink it down. You want it to be emphasized a little bit so you overdo it slightly. 
Here, it's very subtle. So you have to catch the light just right. But when you don't, it just looks like black parts of the costume. So I kind of like it. It's different than what we see a lot of the time. Although the red paint does miss in places, like here you can see the black through there. Wish there was just slightly a little bit more paint to bring the spider logo out. But then on the back, I really, really dig this white spider in the black field. But here you can see some red poking through right there, a little bit right there and then the same thing on the back of the knees but at the same time the overall proportions oh they, they, they just kind of work for a movie spider-man i don't know why he comes with grip hands he has nothing to hold but at this point we probably have a lot of webbing laying around for this figure to use going over articulation there's your standard hinge with the ball at the top can look up can look down mm, not much tilt swivel butterfly joint at the shoulder comes forward Oh, well, you can cross his arm across his face. Look, it's 2016, but you get really nice movement to the back. I guess Hasbro's not wanting to cut a lot out of the front torso to preserve the overall look, but they really don't care about cutting out the back. Just wow! Cha -cha! Have a hinge at the shoulder, comes up to there, swivels around, rotation at the bicep, double elbow most of the way up. Hold on a second, will it go further than that? Let's pop that forward there. Okay, a little bit more. You got your hand go out, you got your hand go around. Hinge of the torso goes forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist, ball coming out to the hip, the leg comes up to there, back, out, Hasbro. Well, we gotta talk about this. Swivel at the bicep, <laughs> swivel at the thigh, double knee, bing. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, rocker ankle. What is that? A little piece of plastic popped off the somewhere. For accessories, Spider-Man comes with two grippy hands and two thwippy hands. I would have liked to have seen some fists here. Man, he cuts a nice silhouette. Spider-Man stands at 5 and 13 sixteenths. Here he is with a Marvel Legends Homecoming homemade suit and the Marvel Legends Homecoming suit. This one comes out a little bit tall. These two look pretty good together, but I, I kind of like that cut better than that cut. And then here he is with the Marvel Legends Worthy cap and the Marvel Legends Iron Spider. Again, with these two, it looks like it could be the same dude in two different suits. And with that, let's transition right into Spider-Man Far From Home Stealth Suit Spider-Man. Okay, if you just open stuff up and just rip it right out of the packaging, be aware that the Molten Man part is in a separate tray and it is heavy, ooh, along with the girder stuck in there. And there's where the fists went. I think at this point it goes without saying that it's a movie character, so it gets a, a unique sculpt to it. And there's a lot going on here that's almost lost in the color of the costume. Have a vest thing going on up to a collar, comes down, you have some nice sculpt to the arms. The belt has a couple pouches, has a buckle kind of on the front, and it is a separate piece, but it's sandwiched between the torso and the crotch. You kind of turn it, but you can't move it up and down. And then the pants has the usual tech detail we see with movie characters. Oh, but wait, there is two different sheens to the blacks. There's a shinier, smooth black in between the more matte blacks. So that kind of sets off some of the detail, and that is the same up here. It's almost like a shiny black undersuit and then a uh, matte black overlays. If it were a real suit, not an action figure. You know what I mean. Then up at the head you have the goggle gear. It kind of reminds me of the homemade suit where he made his own goggles that but if you look real close here it almost seems like they missed on the black paint or the silver or something. It's almost like the lenses are in there unless they're supposed to be an outline of silver. But I do like the extra detail of the sculpted in lines there. Kind of the ski mask look and then the goggles, the straps coming back and around. I will say his neck looks a little bit long compared to the rest of the proportions of the body and the neck piece is actually a separate piece that you can move in between the head and the body not too far it's almost shaped like it's not supposed to move it's just a separate piece I also have a little warpage from the packaging on the left leg unfortunately a little heat that should bring it right out hinge ball at the top looks up looks down oh some nice tilt actually swivel remember what I just said about the regular spider-man suit and not wanting to make the butterfly joints really visible on the front eh, they bypass that on this one I guess because it's all black it's way less noticeable so they just went for it so you get nice range forward but even nicer range back we come together. outside of that there is a hinge to the shoulder comes up swivels around bicep double elbow even with the tech detail uh, gets most of the way up hinge Swivel. Hinge at the torso goes forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist, hip comes up, back, out, thigh swivel, double knee, not quite. Hinge at the foot goes, whoa, all the way back, forward, and then rocker pin. For accessories, like I mentioned, he comes with two fists, two thwips, and changing those out, I noticed the bulk of the bracer is under the wrist. And I thought for a second, oops, that's on backwards, but it's not. You can see the curve of the inside forearm 
is right. So I guess that's the movie design. And then besides the head it comes with, it comes with an alternate head with the goggles flipped up so you can see Peter's regular eyes. Otherwise the same, just the goggles up. Now it's very tight to pull the head on and off and I kind of worry about slipping and breaking that off or bending it or something. It also doesn't help that the neck is super long and the ball is really big. Kind of looks like Peter's gonna go deep sea diving or something. That or he's actually snake eyes. The Spider-Man's a little bit taller than the previous one, I think because of the neck, but this one stands at five and seven eighths. Again, here he is with the homecoming suits, which actually he fits in a little bit better with the homemade suit here. And then Marvel Legends Iron Spider and the Spider-Man Far From Home figure from this wave. Next, I wanna do Scorpion. I wanna get this one open. So tell me, Scorpion, is that a tell on your back or are you just happy to? It's kind of hard to keep everything situated with this thing hanging off the back, but I really, really, really like this body. It's muscled, it's got nice proportions, but it's still a little bit thin. I wanna say it's new with all the lines running across horizontally, and plus it having this torso joint on a male figure. I'd actually like to see this on a couple of characters without the lines on it. I feel like, hmm, when we get to the size comparisons, I feel like this may be a better Cyclops body, but at this point it is a little bit late for that. The lines like Spider-Man probably should have a black wash in them to bring them out a little bit more, but at the same time, here, I don't mind so much of them being a little bit more subtle. With Spider-Man, that's part of his costume. It's supposed to stick out a little bit. The feet seem proportionate, maybe a little bit thin. A fist and a hand is always nice for a villain. But I keep coming back to the musculature. I dig this torso a lot. But I don't know if we'll ever see it reused. Well, like, does that unplug? That may be glued on up in there. Because this is a soft rubber piece covering it, and that travels down to the tail. This bulb on the end has the stinger on top of that. And it is bendy. You can put it into different positions and bring it around and there and twist it and up and over and around. Kind of makes you wonder why we didn't see this with Dr. Octopus or Omega Red. Maybe they have it to where you can only have one bendy per figure. Strong, strong, strong. But it does add some weight to the back. So you'll either have to use it as a kickstand to hold him up or if you want more action poses, he's going to be perpetually leaning forward trying to counteract that weight. And taking that into account, the torso ball joint joint kind of works against that. I can see why they did it here. You can bring it here, bring the tail up. You get a little bit more movement to the tail because of that. But because of that, with the weight of the tail, it may pull on that torso if that loosens up over time. At the moment, it's fairly tight. Not a problem. But I wonder how this will look after a couple of weeks or months on the shelf. And then there is the elephant in the room. The cries of disappointment on message boards everywhere. Nice sculpt to the head. It continues the lines from the body. You have this black sculpted on part here. It could have just been painted on. I appreciate the extra effort there. But they did paint the face green. Looking through pictures of Scorpion online, even McFarlane drew him with the green face and all his classic renditions had the green face. I know it's kind of odd looking. If it's green, it should be a mask. Seeing the actual nose, seeing the mouth, seeing the teeth, especially with skin tone being around the eyes there. This is the way Scorpion looked for years and years and years and years. It's also hard to not think of the amazing Toy Biz version. So going back to this, a little bit jarring, but at the same time, I still have this so I can have both. But if you want to come in and paint it, they do have the mask line there. If you want to get some flesh tone, do it yourself. For articulation, did I mention the bend detail? Hinge of the neck going up to a ball in the skull, and there is a lot of room between the neck and the head. So Scorpion does look up very, very nicely. Buries the chin. Look at that tilt work. Bah, 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 bah. Swivel. Hinge at the shoulder comes up, rotates, bicep. Damn tails knocking stuff all over the place. Elbow, all the way up, hingey swivel. Ball joint in the torso comes forward, arcs back, whoa. Tilt, very nice tilt. That swivels up there and it also swivels at the waist. Hip comes up, past 90, back, out, thigh swivel, double knee, what you got? Oh no, what? Now I noticed that was gapped out of the package. I didn't think it was that loose to where it just pops off, but the gap is gone so I can't complain too much. How about this one? What you got? Oh, it does pull right off. Put it back on and a little gappy, but not as bad as it was. Hmm. Knee joint's frozen. I'll have to work on that, but because of the muscles, not quite all the way up. Good enough, though. Obviously, swivel at the boot. Ankle hinges back, forward, and forward-facing pin for rocker. Scorpion stands at 6 and 5 sixteenths tall. Here he is with that Raft Spider-Man and then the old Toy Biz Scorpion. This damn thing is still amazing. The sculpt work they put in there, the lines have little doo -doo 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 in them with rivets under them. Cloth work, the tail itself. And he was big. 
And I think <laughs> the mental image of this sticks in my brain. So when they go with a more normal sized dude for Scorpion, it looks kind of off, but at the same time, years and years and years and years and years before the 90s, Scorpion had the green face and he had a more moderate build. And then here he is with the Marvel Legends Game Reverse Spider-Man and the two-pack Cyclops. Well, I'll be damned, it's actually kind of shorter than Cyclops on the Bucky Cat body. Still, I like this streamlined build a little bit better than this. And then you know we gotta get to Mysterio. Movie figure, 100% new sculpt, you get the idea. But oh, what a sculpt it is! So much detail here. But before getting into that, I really feel like the movie design nails the comic design. It brings it into real life. I always figured they wouldn't go for the fishbowl dome. Holy shit, they did it. So of course they weren't gonna give him the lantern arms. Oh, they did that too. And then from there, it's pretty much just cape and costume. <laughs> Those are the two biggies for Mysterio, for me. The armor look here, but kind of otherworldly. I, I'm trying to avoid spoilers for this movie, so I don't know how they're going to play Mysterio. I can see that they're kind of playing him as the hero, but we all know. Then this undersuit of this whatever the hell material this is, that just looks fantastic. I love it. There is something to look at all over this figure. I wish there was a little bit more paint work to bring out some of the detail, like against all this gold here. Sure, it ties up to the torso and then the arm pieces, but it's, it's a big chunk of gold. Granted, a big chunk of nicely sculpted gold, but <laughs> this needs a wash, I think. But then it comes along with just touches of purple to, again, tie it to the comic book. And then, of course, that carries on to the cape. There's some sculpt to it, like these diamonds right here painted green. On the back, it's just painted this metallic green for the all-seeing eye or the Mysterio design, whatever. And we kind of run into the same thing as we do with the comic book Mysterio. There's a peg that plugs into the back, but when you don't have it pegged, it kind of lays right on the shoulders. But if you peg it in, this cape floats above the torso. This seems like it needs glued down. But then there's the dome. Look at that mystical shit. You can see my lights, boom, 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 but they're reflected kind of a blue, uh, mystical look to it. The dome itself, pearlescent, it's got some sparkles to it. It looks like on the inside it was sprayed with some kind of just flicked with white paint or something. The overall effect just completely works. In fact, that's kind of how I wish this one looked. Sure, I dig the skull underneath with the snake going through it and stuff, but man, look at that. And that all sits on the neck that has the standard Marvel Legends articulation to it. Uh, look down, look up, nice tilt because of all that room under there. Swivel, I am looking at you. Hinge at the shoulder comes out, swivels around, bicep, double elbow, the cut comes down into the lanterns on his arm, so you can get full range there. Oh, Hasbro, good job there. There's some hinge, there's some swivel. Like Scorpion, there's ball joint in the torso. Tilt, I love some tilt, but not a lot of forward. I guess the sculpt runs into itself. He does arc back really well, though. Ball joint at the hip comes forward. Back, not so much. Out, not bad. Swivel at the thigh, I kind of feel like they missed an opportunity to hide it at the top of this band, but what you gonna do? Double knee joint kicks his mysterious ass. Hinge at the ankle, goes all the way back, forward, and forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with these scary hands. And when that doesn't work, he'll just punch him in the face. Those are easy enough to pop out, not a problem at all. I wish he came with some of the effects you see from the movie, but I have seen people use the, I think they're the effects from the cheaper six inch line from Hasbro, and those seem to work pretty well. <laughs> that just looks so good. Who ever thought they would nail Mysterio in the movie universe? I mean, that is amazing right there. Mysterio stands at six and a quarter inches tall to the top of his dome. Here he is with the Marvel Legends Spider-Man Far From Home Spider-Man from this wave, and then Marvel Legends Iron Spider. And then here he is with the Marvel Legends Raft Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends comic book Mysterio. <laughs> I didn't realize that they may have been going for, with the undersuit, all the detail on it, kind of uh, the movie version of the bed mattress look of the comic book costume. Only thing missing is a Jake Gyllenhaal head, and will we see that at some point? Who knows? Oh, here comes the Spider Woman, and her big heaping mass of lava in the package. For being one of the smaller figures in the wave, this is the heaviest package, I think. Again, boom, inner tray. Huh, I didn't realize the inner plastic was kind of a translucent orange either. That would be interesting in light. At this point, Hasbro's done a good job of giving us a bunch of different base bodies, so I don't even pretend to claim I know who uses what body, and this one came from this part, unless it's just blatantly obvious. But at this point, everybody knows I am a complete sucker for a black and white color scheme, and this one, uh, yeah, it's one of those figures. All the paint application seems to be pretty good on mine. I've heard of people having problems with paint clumps or uh, missing paint in places, but other than right here, where these two seams meet, um, it seems 
pretty good. For being a spider person, I wish she had double elbows for more range. I'm also getting tired of these hands, I think. <laughs> we see these on most females anymore. But I do like the overall proportions. It's a nice looking figure. Looking at it objectively, it may be a little bit plain, just a painted on black and white suit, but at the same time, oh, it does look good. And then up at the head, it almost feels like they used a kind of metallic white as opposed to the white on the rest of the body. She also has a little glob of plastic on the bottom there. What happens if we do this? Okay, the actual color of the plastic of the head is black. So you cut any of that off and you're gonna see black through there. So I'll have to touch that up with a little flesh colored paint. Besides the flesh color though, the pink of the lips and then the color of the hair, I really, really like how it contrasts against the color scheme of the, well, the whole rest of the figure. And I guess because they thought, oh, well, this is just a blank body. It's got a spider logo on it, some white, some black. Let's go ahead and wash the hell out of the hair. It makes it look spectacular. Spider woman. Plus I like the sculpt here. It looks kind of odd the way it loops here, but at the same time, it's dynamic. I, I can work with that. But because of all that hair, it kind of kills articulation up here. Standard hinge with a ball joint. Can't really look up at all. It's not going there. Can look down though. Swivel to there, to there. Not terrible. A little bit of tilt. Shoulder hinges up. Swivels around. Hinges swivel at the elbow gives you uh, about 90. Swivel. Ye old wrists of the hinge and the swivel. Ball joint in the torso comes forward, goes back. Tilt. Tilt, swivel, ball at the hip, comes forward, back, out, uh, not too much. Thigh swivel, double knee, not, oh, well, there you go, boom. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Oh, there's the paint slop glop right there. Forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. Now, like I said, she gets the magic casting hands, but she also gets this amazingly unique to this figure of this web shooting out. If I remember right, Julia was more, was it Mystic Web or something shot out? Some kind of psionic stuff? I should do some homework before I do this. It's a pearlescent, translucent white webbing and then this, whatever this effect around and then the glove painted on the back. It leaves it with just a swivel, but I don't know. What's that game where they catch the ball in there and then they toss it back out? I do like it though. It's it's different. Now I gotta put a West Coast Avengers team together. Spider Woman stands at six and an eighth inches tall. And then here she is with the Raft Spider-Man and Jessica Drew. I also like that they're not on the same bodies. You can tell a definite difference in the proportions. And then finally, as far as carded characters go, Hydro Man. <laughs> Another example of my blue background working against me here. A lot of us were hoping for this as soon as they debuted the Netflix Luke Cage body. It was just a nice t-shirt, jeans, and boots combo. And when I think of Hydro Man, that's the costume I think of. Nice wrinkles to the shirt, a muscular body underneath. The jeans has kind of a texture to it. With the seams running down the sides, it runs into more nice wrinkle work down here. Big heavy boots, nice sculpt work to the laces and such. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but the new part of this body are the Hydro Arms. Came in with some translucent blue, gave them some fists, big bulked up watery, fluid-like, big gripping hand on the right side. Just a nice show of his power without overdoing the whole body that way. It makes me thirsty. And then up at the head, it's Hydro Man, yes, but we're kind of running into the same thing we run into with, what is it, Wolverine, Logan, maybe some of the other heads, and that's the distance of the eyes apart. Now I get it, I get it, not everybody looks the same. And when we really get down to it, Hydro Man's made of water. He can look like whatever he wants, really. I do like the flipping out hair. It's a nice sculpt on top of the head. And the overdone smile. Again, he's a bad guy. He's happy to be a bad guy. He just wants to be bad. But I can't help it. I, I feel like the face is a little bit broad. Another problem I'm running into is the weight of the arms here. <laughs> so of course you're going to stand right off the bat. The arms do make the figure a little bit top heavy. So you have to adjust for that. It's not the end of the world. It's pretty easy to do. But I thought I'd point it out. You have your hinge. You have your ball joint. Looks up pretty good. Looks down. Not a lot of tilt. But swivel. Arm hinges out. Swivels around. There's a hinge and swivel at the elbow but because of this water sculpt coming down over the arm you get about there it does rotate in and out you do get a little bit more to the left arm actually you get two clicks over there and then with the fist you get hinge in and out and then rotation same thing with the open hand over here torso hinges forward not that great arcs back swivel at the waist hip ball comes forward back out not bad thigh swivel double knee not quite but most of the way 
Hinge at the boot, goes back a little bit, goes forward a little bit, and then forward facing pin. For accessories, you get two water boots. And those essentially just fit over the feet whenever it's standing up. They do kind of lock on and it helps with the stability a little bit, so that works out. Plus it just adds to the overall water effect of, well, Hydro Man. He's coming up from the puddle. <laughs> Hydro Man stands at six and five eighths tall. Here he is with the Raft Spider-Man and the Raft Sandman. I don't think I ever built the Build-A-Figure. Hmm. And I'm okay with Sandman changing size and growing and stuff, but I'd kind of like to see a Sandman on this body. Body-wise, except for maybe the sleeves, I always thought of Hydro Man and Sandman being interchangeable. <laughs> I don't know, I'd just like to see a custom of that. And then here he is with the Marvel Legends Game Reverse Spider-Man and Wavemate Scorpion. Guess what, some asshole forgot to hit the record button when he was building the Build-A-Figure. That guy's fired, he's out of here. This girder right here was a separate piece in the package. It slots into the left arm. And also had the problem of the lower part of the body being backwards in the package. So <laughs> that caused some confusion. That may have been why somebody didn't hit record on the camera. But it definitely looks like a molten man. It's definitely not the comic book version which basically when you get down to it is a gold dude so i will say this is more interesting than that even though it ends up looking kind of like clayface nice gold tone to the overall figure with some orange translucent plastic showing through in places making it seem lava and if you do get the light behind it it does shine through but it's going through several layers of plastic so it's not as bright as it seems like it should be. And the asymmetrical design, <laughs> that's just a personal preference, but to me, oh, it's driving me nuts. This being bigger, this being a big chunky foot, this being more human-like foot. I'm like, what is going on here? Also, the knee is perpetually bent. The kneecap gets in the way of getting the leg straight so he's constantly stepping forward you can kind of bring it about with this hidden swivel right here it's not bad especially with the rest of the body being all mouth so i'm not sure if this is supposed to be here and then this turned around it does look better and it works a little bit better it's staying like that i don't even care i don't know maybe i'll like it more once i see the movie there is a ball joint up here but because the head is so sunk into the torso you only get a little bit up, a little bit of down, a little bit of swivel. The arm comes up, same thing on this side. Swivel at the bicep, hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to about right there. A little bit further on the big left arm, and then that big left hand has hinge, has swivel. Kind of a ball joint in the mid torso, goes around, but you get more movement at the waist. Actually, you get a hell of a lot of bend at the waist. Hip comes forward, back, out. How can the Build-A-Figure have more range of movement out than most of the figures in the wave. There's a thigh swivel hidden behind some goop right here and right here. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up about 90. Same on this side. Then you actually get a hinge over here, forward, some rocker, and some rocker back forward. The articulation at the waist really helps out with the head because that's the only way he's gonna look forward is to bend over like that. That's probably why the leg is sculpted this way, stepping forward to offset the weight of that. Fairly large, here it is with the Mysterio and Spider-Man from this movie, from the same wave. And then here it is with the comic book characters, again, from the same wave. So at the end of the day, a very solid wave, but it, it's hard not to like figures like this, you know? We get a little bit of movie for the MCU fans, we get a little bit of comic book for the comic book fans, and if you're a fan of both, like me, then uh, happy all the way around. Spider-Woman, a nice addition to the shelf. I love the black and white. It stands out against the colorfulness of the rest of the display. Hydra-Man with his water effects. It's not overdone. It's just the arms and the feet if you want them to be, but at the same time, it clearly displays his power and that works. It's Hydro Man. Getting the movie figures here, Mysterio, Spider-Man, Stealth Spider-Man, and then Molten Man has actually made me more excited about going and seeing the movie this week. Hasbro did a great job of conveying these four figures into plastic form. But if I had to pick a favorite, it would be Mysterio. I just love that dome. Scorpion with his bendy tail is amazing. I know people have their grops with them, maybe too small. They don't like the green on the face. But to me, this is a classic Scorpion with modern aesthetics. Doppelganger, same thing. I know people have their grops with it. He should have torso articulation. I completely agree with that. But at the same time, with all the extra added arms and such, it's still kind of fun to pose around. And it's always fun to add new figures to the shelf. And this, this is just a fun wave. It builds movie hype, at the same time giving us some classic characters that we needed for the Spider-Man shelf. But if you like to review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the foosh.